Today we will be learning how to balance more complex chemical equations. As you saw in a previous video, chemical equations are balanced by a few simple steps. To review, what numbers cannot be changed in a chemical equation? That's right, chemical equations can only be balanced by changing the coefficients of the molecules, not subscripts within the molecules. That would change the identity of the molecule. Let's work through an approach that works well for balancing chemical equations. Let's start with the following chemical equation. This equation represents the fermentation of glucose to ethanol and carbon dioxide, which is a process that occurs when making fermented beverages like wine and kombucha. Now let's balance this equation. First, let's get rid of the states of matter while we work. They're just going to distract us. We will add them back at the end once the equation is balanced. Let's also draw out a table to balance our reactants and products. We'll put the reactants on the left side and the products on the right. Since this equation only has the atoms carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, that's what we're going to put in our table. The next thing we need to do is to make all of the coefficients in front of the molecule zero. I know this doesn't seem to make much sense, but it is much easier to start with zero of each molecule than one of each. Now, let's first put a coefficient of one on the reactant, glucose. You always wanna start with the largest and most complex molecule to balance an equation. Once a coefficient is there, we are not going to change it. Now that this molecule has a coefficient, how many of each atom do we have on the left side of the equation? As you can see, since we put a coefficient of one in front of the glucose molecule, we have six carbon, 12 hydrogen, and six oxygen atoms on the left side of the equation. Now it's time to balance these. We need the same number on the right side of the equation. We're going to start off by balancing the hydrogen atoms. We're picking hydrogen because it is only in one molecule on the right side of the equation. That's really important. If we were to start with carbon, it would make our lives much more difficult. What molecule should we change the coefficient on to balance the hydrogens? Since C2H5OH is the only product with hydrogen in it, we are going to use this molecule to match the number of H's on the reactant side. What coefficient should we put on C2H5OH to balance the number of hydrogens between the reactants and products? A coefficient of two is needed to match the 12 hydrogens on the reactant side since C2H5OH has six hydrogens per molecule. Okay, we're part of the way there. We have 12 hydrogens on each side of the equation. Now, what atoms do we still need to balance on the product side? Nice choice. Looking at our table, we still need our number of oxygen and carbon atoms on the product side to match the number of oxygen and carbon atoms on the reactant side. So, what molecule should we change the coefficients on to balance the carbons and oxygens? Remember, we never change the coefficients on molecules we've already balanced. Because we already have positive integer coefficients on C2H5OH and C6H1206, we have to change the coefficient on CO2. How many total carbon and oxygen atoms do we need on the product side of the equation? Right, we need six carbon atoms and six oxygen atoms. However, let's take a quick look at our table. We already have four carbon atoms and two oxygen atoms on the product side since we balanced C2H5OH first. So, since we already have some existing carbon and oxygen atoms on the product side, what should we change the coefficient on CO2 to? Putting a coefficient of two in front of CO2 adds two more carbons and four more oxygens to the right-hand side of our equation. Now, look at our overall equation and the table we've constructed. Do you think we're done balancing the chemical equation? Right, this equation is balanced perfectly. Just remember to always add the states of matter back into the equation once you are done. Let's take a look at another example. This is the chemical equation for the combustion reaction of butane, a fuel commonly used in lighters and portable cooking stoves. First, let's make sure we draw out our table, get rid of the states of matter, and make the coefficient of each molecule zero. In this example, we have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in the reaction. What molecule should we give a coefficient to first? Since C4H10 is the largest and most complex molecule in this equation, we give it a coefficient of one. Make sure to record the atoms in the table. Now that we have a molecule on the reactant side, which atoms should we balance on the product side? We can balance either carbon or hydrogen on the product side. Let's start off with carbon. What coefficient should we put in front of CO2? That's right. Putting a four in front of CO2 adds four carbons and eight oxygens to the right-hand side of the equation. Now let's balance the hydrogens. What coefficient should we put on H2O? Adding a five in front of H2O adds 10 hydrogens to the right-hand side. It also adds five oxygens to the right-hand side. Now that we have balanced our carbons and hydrogens with the molecules on the product side, is our equation balanced? 
If we look at our table, we can see that the number of oxygen on the reactant side does not match the number of oxygen on the product side. So, what molecule do we need to balance now? O2 is the only molecule that still has a coefficient of zero, so it's the only one we can change. Luckily, we've done great so far and only oxygen atoms aren't balanced. Since we need to make the number of oxygen atoms equal, what should oxygen's coefficient be? I know it seems surprising, but you can use fractions as coefficients when balancing equations. By using 13 halves as our coefficient for O2, we've successfully balanced our equation. Let's add back our states, and we're done. One last thing. As long as the equation is balanced, you can multiply all of the coefficients by any number, and it will stay balanced. Can we also write this equation as 2C4H10 plus 13O2 yields 8CO2 plus 10H2O? Since this equation is still balanced, it can be written this way. Notice that in the first version we balanced, the ratio of butane to oxygen is 1 to 13 halves. In the second version, the ratio is 2 to 13. These two ratios are the same. That's why fractions are okay to use. All we care about are the ratios. Just to recap some of the big ideas in this video, start with a coefficient of zero for all species. Add a coefficient of one to the most complex molecule and then start changing the other zeros until the reaction is balanced. Once you've changed the coefficient from zero, don't touch that molecule's coefficient again. Don't worry about fractions. They're perfectly okay.